good sis. It's 12.30, let's stop at 1.30 and then just go right into plugging unless you gotta take a pee and if you do, pinch it. Pensions? <clears throat> pensions. Pensions. What's your guys' take on pensions? I don't even know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have a job, right? Well, pensions. like, I, I understand pension as the money you get after you work a job long enough, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, that's what it is, yeah. I just like saying pensions. It's a fun word. Yeah, the Pirates of Penchins. <laughs> <laughs> Pent shins. Pent shins. <laughs> I used to tell, uh, when I first started acting, I, I had to create a resume that didn't have anything on it because I hadn't done anything. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Jamil, our, our best friend, Jamil always uh, uh, gets on me because I, I wrote the Pirate King and the Pirates of Penzance in like, I said I did it, which which I was, but I was just like an ensemble member, and I said that I was the Pirate King, and it was totally Jamil who played that role, and I totally stole his spotlight. <laughs> oh, damn, <laughs> I dude. <know. laughs> I, uh, He's the only friend that we have that's actually going to get a pension. So yeah, gonna seriously. <laughs> seriously. And then we're going to take... Wait, guys, no, that's a pension, not a pension. <laughs> What the? F Check it out, dude. What's a pensions? I don't know what word you're saying. You pensions, say pensions, pen chance, pen chance, pensions, P E N <laughs> chance. Is pen chance a word? Yeah, pensions, pensions, oh, penchant, penchant. Like you have a like a strong habitual liking for something or tendency to do something is a penchant. I thought you were just gonna read that definition and just act as if it was coming from your own <laughs> no I'm understand. looking it up right now dude. Like, oh pension you mean like a uh, something with a strong habitual liking for something or tendency to do something yeah that's a pension dude dude we brought the dogs into the studio today and good god are they annoying <laughs> ah. I love my animals so much but they can't they're like me they can't sit still no they have a pension for tinkering <laughs> seriously get over here chunk you're stuck <laughs> nice one, in Steve. between the cameras chunk come here buddy Come here. Can have you a seat. see him on the wide? Have a seat. Relax. Oh, Relax. They're on the wide. Sit. Sit. They're looking good. Ricky's looking good. She's I glowing. love... Ricky, you're glowing. Sweetheart. I love dogs, and I have no problem with them when they're not mine, but I will not get dogs, dude. Yeah, they're... they're I mean, you know, it's a hassle. <laughs> it's a hassle. <clears throat> but you love them to pieces. That's what... I the, mean... <laughs> that's what's interesting about your because we had a blowout the other night at uh, the cabin you're like i don't think i'm gonna get married i ain't yeah. gonna have kids <laughs> all the while he's texting like 42 women at the <laughs> same time <laughs> it's like okay bud whatever you gotta tell yourself and there's i knew the focus was off uh there's something about like taking responsibility like ha like mm -hmm. committing to something that it, a level of it, especially dogs is like there's a level of it's a hassle you love it so much and that's what makes the hassle worth it yeah that's what makes the commitment not feel like a commitment but you can also zoom out far enough and be like oh man what my dog what would my life be like if i didn't if i wasn't responsible for two animals yeah easier i don't know i mean it would just be different you just yeah you just put something <clears throat> else in front of it yeah i don't know man i'm um uh I think if I lived by myself, I might consider getting a dog. I know. But if you live by yourself, don't do, don't get a dog. You need well, at least a partner not get one to dog. like. I don't know. I mean, the only reason I would want to get one is because I would be like wanting a companion in my alone time. Yeah, but then you can't travel. You're gonna do you like gotta spend a thousand dollars to put him in dog daycare. I mean, daycare. again, I'm pro I'm more than likely just not gonna get one. So yeah, you can have one of these. Take your pick. Uh, I don't want either of them. <laughs> I like my dog. Yeah, I like. I love. I love both my dogs, but there's <laughs> definitely like at times where I'm just like so annoyed that I have dogs. Too many responsibilities, dude. Too many responsibilities. Pups, kids, wives. Jeez. Julians. Julians. Julians? Yeah. yeah, for real. <laughs> no, it's you know whatever. Any lens you look through, whatever you can see it differently. I love my animals so yeah. much. You have a good penchant for taking care of everybody. <laughs> I do my best. <laughs> Let's see if we can use the word penchant ten times in this podcast. Penchant, a strong or habitual liking for something or tendency to do something. I was strong. That's weird. Look at the the thing says uh, he has a penchant for adopting stray dogs. That's uh, yeah. the uh, exams. 
Yep. I don't have a penchant for that. Except, except Chunk was a, was a, yeah, he wasn't a stray. He was just somebody who was like, I'm sick of this. Oh, Chunk's a good boy. <clears throat> Chunk's a good boy. They they told us too the the lady we got him from. She's like, oh yeah, the owners gave me Chunk. You know, like just gave him up for adoption, and then went and bought the same dog, uh-huh. <laughs> like a puppy, the what? same dog. I was like, man, that's rough. And Chunk's a good, good rig, man. He was trained when we got him too. He'll he's sit, a, just stand. He's a good, good rig. He's a good rig. He's, he's got a good a rig. Penchant for for being a good boy. <laughs> Steve's crushing it. He's crushing his task. <laughs> he's all the while he's like actually holding up fingers about how many times he's <laughs> used the <them>. three <laughs> tallies. Another <laughs> penchant Thrice. for tallying my vocabulary. <laughs> Five. Uh, just hear him under his breath. <laughs> Six. Doing the ten dual commandments. <laughs> yes, dude. That oh, was oh good. Was that movie uh with um where they had to use oh god, it's a cop movie? They had to use the kindergarten cop. Die Hard. No, it's a comedy. Lethal Weapon. Um, Super Troopers. Other guys. Yeah. <laughs> so where, where he's where he walks to the car and he has to use that word too many times. Excuse me, are you saying meow? Meow. Oh yeah. yeah. Gap again. <laughs> oh my god, what That's, a scene. Am I yeah. saying meow? I just the the writing in that kind of the, the shit, like especially off the wall comedy, like Super Troopers. Super Troopers was groundbreaking <laughs> when it first came out. What was that line last night in that show, Brock Meyer? We were watching that you. Got, got a nice kick out of that that one character that just had one line at the bar <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck what was I it I forget man he, he just comes in and he's just like he like somebody asks him something about himself and he's just like uh, uh, fuck uh, well see that's no, good writing too that Brockmire show yeah Brockmire is incredible writing yeah, I, I don't know who, who, who wrote that does, is I've, is Hank Azaria a part of the know, writing I'm on that? Look it up. Uh, he created so. the character, yeah, so yeah. it's all his story. Um, I've been watching Ozark. So good. I've been yeah, it's so yeah. cool, man. I, I'm putting Jason Bateman at the top of not at the top, but like in my list of favorite actors. Laura Linney is amazing too. Um, they're just both so good, man. It's such a it's such a. Um, so Hank Azaria is involved in the writing. He wrote, th- I mean, he's credited for 32 episodes. As an actor. Series writing credits. Oh, wow. Never mind. Hank Azaria. Well, I think just because he Joel created- Church Cooper. I mean, I'm sure he's part of the writing team. Yeah, so it looks like it's him and this Joel Ch- Church Cooper guy for the most part. And then they have like mm-hmm. other writers come in and help out. But That's awesome. Yeah, he... he m- m- murdered that role, dude. Like some of the... <laughs> some of the... Right, because it's so game. vulgar. It's so vulgar, but he delivers it in such a sportscaster. Yeah, elegant. Elegancy. Yeah. Great, uh, great vocab for profanities. Incredible mm-hmm. vocab for for delivering profanities. He has a penchant for doing Ooh, nice. Uh, God, tally it down. Sit There's on. a big seven. <laughs> Sex. <laughs> this episode will be called Pension. That's eight. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't use it in the right context, though. Oh, Brian. I did. It is a context that works, baby. <laughs> Yeah, man. Well, what's been going on with you guys since we saw each other last a couple hours ago? <laughs> <laughs> did you guys have any panic attacks or no? Last night I was happened no. to you. Last night I was good. I did not take too much. Too much. No. no. Take any? Oh yeah, I'm smelling that too, Steve. Right. Does it smell like poopies or like baloney? Like it smells Steve like baloney. <laughs> well, I, I think it Ricky, is. Dude? I think it's Ricky. Yeah. Oh. Like. oh yeah, it smells sour. Yeah, Ricky. Ricky, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Sucks, dude. If you want to volunteer to wash Alan Stone's dog, please. Mm. Yikes. Yeah, Ricky, Ricky, like, I've had a bunch of, you guys understand this and know this, but the folks at home don't. So I have two bulldogs, if you're just listening Ugh. at home. I have two bulldogs. One is in, one is in Old English. <laughs> Her name is Ricky Lake. <laughs> And then I have a, another bulldog. We're not positive. It's like a bulldog boxer mix. I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe. But uh, his name's Chunk Norris. And uh, they're both good boys and good girls. But uh, Ricky, Ugh. unfortunately, <laughs> has really gnarly digestion Rick. problems. God and Damn dude, it. over the holidays, get this little Kris Kringle gift that I got. <laughs> Ricky, when I wake up in the morning, Ricky's puking everywhere. All over the place. We're just like, oh, Rick, what's going on? You know, that's a good sign of like last leg is when a dog starts puking. So we take her to the veterinarian who has a penchant for stray dogs. (laughs) Nine. (laughs) And (laughs) 
<laughs> and um, they go, yeah, she <laughs> she has like a 14 pound ball of shit in her belly. Uh. So this is the second time we've had to take her in there and a doctor has told us, you know, that she's got just, she just backed up. So the first time we go in there, they give her like 14 or 15 enemas and they're like, and then they just give her back to us. They're like, we think she'll pass it. You know, it's, she's got so many camels. She came back smelling like a salmon farm. <laughs> it was absurd. <laughs> so th this is the second time we, uh, they, can't get it to move like doctors like yeah i'm like you know i'm putting devices up there and like hitting like what feels like a wall it's like a gnarly wall of dog poop mm. so they take her to the er er uh finally gets her to pass it they say she just exploded just like <laughs> bye <-ay." laughs> and bye -ay. Uh, <laughs> so now we've had to like dude her <laughs> God, her eating regimen is like, okay, you take a half cup spoonful of this huh. and then you take a quarter droplet of this. And then Yikes. you it's like, man, this poor, this poor animal was not meant to live. In Although you can see her uh, bottom torso now. She looks a lot better and she seems she a lot does, happier yeah. for sure. But you know, she smells like, like poopy doopy. Do dogs have torsos? Is that this, does that work the same way? Uh, let's like, check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, dogs I, I'm, have I'm, torsos. Like, they have like obviously legs that would be the bottom half of mm -hmm. them, but like they got ribs, the top. I would think that they have. I torsos. wish dogs walked on two hind legs. Isn't torsos just like the, uh, the the space where all your organs hang out? I don't know. I just I just I just associate torso with like what is upright. So like what's below uh, my belly button, I guess, is my like lower torso. Well, so they don't call it a torso. They call it well. There's a chest. There's the withers, which are fun. <laughs> ah, the, the withers. Uh, the shoulder. The prosternum. <laughs> I don't upper care arm, forearm. Yeah, I no but longer I think, have a torso. I just have withers. <laughs> <laughs> I think what they. I think what they have. Well, they have an abdomen. Well, no torso an abdomen. and a loin. I think the loin is maybe what is in place of the torso. Folks at home, if you know the answers, yeah. don't tell us because this <laughs> is a fake show. <laughs> we <laughs> are see Ricky's loins. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Join our Patreon to see Ricky's loins. We were, talking about, <laughs> we were talking about last night. Uh, well, it hasn't have anything to do with torsos, but uh, height and you being six foot one when you were... Uh, height. Height. Height? <laughs> we are talking about your height. <gasps> height. That's exactly how it's spelled, guys. <gasps> <laughs> we were talking about your no. We were talking about your height, 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 height. When does height and height work in this? <laughs> Ten more sentences. Don't look it up, dude. <laughs> Nobody that's listening to this podcast wants to know anything about how to say things or us look at this. saying. Look at this. Height times. versus height. <laughs> height see. versus height. Yeah, height is the only correct version of this word today. Height there you go. Is it's no, no longer, longer considered a standard spelling Alan, of this word. Get out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny as I say height all the time, and Taz is like, it's height. You also say caveat all yeah. the time too. You you have a penance for using words incorrectly. <laughs> Penchant. That's Penchant. what I said. Yeah, that one doesn't that, count. That, that, that was, was the joke. <laughs> that was the joke. You have a pendant. <laughs> you have a pendant for using those words. Okay, so what were we talking about for, with the height? Oh, how you were, uh, <laughs> your your mom and uh, sister and brother-in-law and their kids were all over last night, and you were talking about being six foot one in like fifth grade, and I was thinking that was crazy, but then your mom was just like, Alan, shut the fuck up. No, you won't work. First of all, my mom doesn't speak like that. I know, but um, I wish she did. She's, she's a sweet funny. angel, and she said, oh, Alan, I don't believe that's true. <laughs> <laughs> she did say crap. Heard it. Yeah, she'll chuck, she'll chuck some, some swear storms. She said bull crap. I like, no, but I was for sure like at least six foot in seventh grade. I, I, th I was, that's why I was convinced I was going to go play for the Utah Jazz. Maybe <laughs> I was going to be Stockton 2.0 yeah. and I, then I, never grew another inch. I thought I was like, I'm going to be six foot nine, dude. I got a couple uncles that are just, six foot six. Did you six. just start getting stuffed or did you like, did you just slowly get worse at basketball or did you I didn't slowly good? get worse. Like everybody else just got, got taller and taller and stronger. And so did like I was a, f I was what I, I was full form when I was in seventh grade, mm -hmm. like full form man. Mm -hmm. 
had you gone through puberty too i guess that they go hand in hand right you mm-hmm. grow you yeah i think like i was really still i think my voice was still cracking every so often you know but i was pretty much through it by the time i got into high school for sure mm. and all my buddies like the guys on my basketball team were shorter than me up until like sophomore year and then sophomore summer they all turned into like six foot three six foot fours put on a couple extra pounds and i was still the same size as i ever was yeah and that's when my hoop dreams went away and i decided i was gonna pick and grin and sing songs about equality (laughs) hey folks today our episode is brought to you in part by our good friends at Ladder Coffee. Head to LadderCoffee.com and you can order beans directly from the brewer, as well as some of this beautiful cold brew. Locally owned and operated out of Spokane, Washington. Check it out. Ladder Coffee. I'm jacked! <laughs> what, uh, that was the only sport you played, right? Basketball. No, I played baseball. Oh, you did? Mm-hmm. What position? Catcher, right? I was catching. Yeah, that was my jam, did dude. Get I love catching. you squashed catcher. in the nuts? Yeah, my, my two, the two number one pitchers on my high school bas- baseball team, uh, number one could whip it at like 91, 92. He got clocked a couple times throwing it that high. Wow. But like averaged, you know, 85s, which I don't know if you've ever gone to a radar like throw the ball as fast yeah. as you possibly I think can. I got like sixty one. Yeah, you th- I gotta yeah, think you fucking stuck whip this yeah. thing, baby. Yeah. It's like forty seven <laughs> miles an hour. You're like what? Yeah. So he had some he had some thunder on them chips. I think he actually coaches at Gonzaga, maybe AJ Prozac, dude. Shout out to old yeah, age AJ Addison, Prozzi. baby Addy Addy Addison. Ooh. What a sweetie, dude. I miss that guy. Um, he had some yeah he had some thunder. I went through. I think my senior year i went through two catcher's gloves like because it was just ripping right through yeah it. just like wore them out no wow. and i and i was really the only catcher on the team so but yeah a few times man well i remember one time i got a foul tip right in the throat oh, man. so like it the guy swung and he you know foul tipped it but it bounced straight down on the plate hit the corner of the plate and like when you hear the bat hit the ball your natural tendency is to look up mm-hmm. because like if, if it's up in the air, you're going to be able to catch it and make it out. And then back to spitting sunflower seeds in the dugout, which is everybody's favorite <laughs> yeah, pastime. That's all I was doing. And so I picked my head up like this. Well, the ball went down, right? Hit the plate and then just <clears throat> right in my jugular. Aye. I walked it off. Nice, dude. Uh, caught one, too. Like, I remember we placed third in state my senior year, which is a pretty big deal for, my, uh, for me at the time. And I remember my thighs, because like as a catcher, you have to get down in the dirt and block the ball so that it doesn't go back to the backstop, right? Well, our number two kitch- p- pitcher, this guy named Michael McCann, a shout out to Mike. Mike, baby! Mm. He had a wicked curveball. Drop off the table is what they called it. What does that mean? So there's like a couple different types of curveballs, but typically in high school, you, th- you choose between one or two. There's the slider, which kind of goes across the plate. It goes like a... You usually if you're between one or two well you can throw both of them but usually you only have one good curveball in right high because in high school like form. and if like a knuckleball is nobody can throw a knuckleball. there's like two pitchers in the entirety of the world right now who can throw <laughs> le- legit knuckleball they're so hard to throw they're such weird looking uh, have you ever tried to swing again have you ever saw a knuckleball come at you yeah it's yeah, wild crazy. um so michael threw a drop off the table which is like it feels like it's coming right at your chest and then right at the last second, it drops, drops off, it off the table. into the strike zone. Or, you know, however, which way. It might be seeming like it's coming to the strike zone, and it just drops out right away. So his was really good, and I would always have to dig it out of the dirt and block it. And it would, it would because it's spinning forward, it hits the dirt and then just, like, skips. Huh. And it would come right in my crotch digs, dude. And I would have these little Rawlings uh, lace marks on my by my ding dong. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think I played baseball far enough into where I was wearing cups. I played, but I was just like mm. never prepared enough. Maybe I and I played catcher before. I just you I played, played catcher every- without wearing a cup. Oh yeah, dude. I uh, dude, I played football without proper cleats. I remember wearing like my skate skater shoes on mm. the field i mean i'd never played i played baseball which is so stupid why did they, I, I played every position and i never i was always that guy that when it was the bottom of the last inning and there was two outs 
and there was runners on in scoring positions. This is like your chance to be the miracle worker. Chance to be the miracle worker. <laughs> you failed. I was striking out yeah. every time. Like it happened way more often than not. I was like, just don't put me in this last spot. Like, don't don't put me in, coach. I'm not like down to do this. <laughs> I'm, I'm not ready fail. to play. I'm gonna lose the game for us. And then I would. And then it was just like, well, I f- fucking told you, man. Just like take me out. <laughs> take, Did you play hockey, Steve? Yeah, I played all of them, all the sports. You played every sport. Yeah. Badminton. Up until, up did you until. did you shoot shot put? Yeah. No, you didn't. Yeah, elementary Olympics, dude. I won. <laughs> Elements, dude. <laughs> nice. What are the shot puts made out of? Is it lead? Yeah, I think it's so. Lead. I don't know. I don't know. Rust. <laughs> Rust and regret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like I like hockey the most probably. What do you think the dumbest sport is? The dumbest, like the dumbest sport. The when dumbest you watch it, just like is curling. <laughs> I want. Me and my family wanted to go so bad. We went to the 2010 Olympics in Whistler, uh, the the Winter Olympics, and we were watching them curling. And we were like the Jamaican bobsled team. We're like, because my dad's from Ecuador, so we were like, let's start the Ecuadorian curling team. We'll just <laughs> immediately qualify because nobody else is trying. <laughs> so we always talked about it. all they're doing is. <laughs> <laughs> just sweep I don't really understand it at all there must be some what type of skill set well the skill set seems to be them like taking a running leap and then just sliding yeah, down just slide. the whole th- the whole lane that's what it is it's well, I mean, not about it would, the ball or the token piece or whatever well, I'm sure there's a plenty of skill involved with it I'm, uh, I guarantee there's more skill <laughs> than you're seeing but like For sure what I'm always Olympic perplexed sport. by is how they just take <laughs> one they take one little gliding footstep to the line that you take off from and then they just like whoosh, pull yeah. up a clip, like little Arctic Darth Vader's <laughs> floating. Pull up the nicest, the nicest curling clip of all yes, time, dude. Curling yes. highlights, bring it up, <laughs> son. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and curling, curling champions, dude. Oh, I mean, yes. They got some. They curling probably got some highlights. real nice ones, dude. Yes, top fifty greatest curling show moments. Oh, we got some time, and we're doing sports. <laughs> Wait, look at this. Fun. This is what I'm talking about. Oh, I guess they're not slipping. I guess. No, just, look at the guy on the yeah, right, yeah, though. Yeah. What is he doing? He's, well, he's just pushing himself up. Come on, dude. And inside. Oh. Oh, he puts oh, it right. What prosperous, a dude. Prosperous. <laughs> this is 50 of them. Go to the first one, dude. I want to see the number one. Wait around the guard. All the, the way to the end. end. All the way to the end. Look at him go. Look at that form. Yeah, that's what I'm talking Julian, about. That's that cool. Could be you. I'm trying, dude. I'm trying to get that Ecuadorian team up, dude. Sponsor me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for some endorsements. <laughs> oh, man. That's awesome. Okay, this is. Look at him. Oh, is that Rick Moranis? <laughs> Too soon. Too soon. Why? Because he got punched in the face. It's the saddest right? thing in the world. I know. It, it's one of the what saddest. Was that? What was so good about that? Oh, they just pushed all the other ones out. Uh, this guy's got a friggin' chest sweater on. Fuck. What a right. savage! This is number, this is one. number if one. You guys are watching. We're watching curling highlights, and you can tell by the screen that it's Nagano Olympics, baby. <laughs> that was my favorite year. Yeah, right, dude. This is '78. No, it's Nagano, baby. <laughs> Nagano. That's the only Olympic you remember. <laughs> no, because the name. It's like Tokyo <laughs> Drift, name. baby. That's my it's favorite like Tokyo name of a movie. Drift. <laughs> Damn, dude. Oh, she's screaming, dude. Oh, oh, dude. She's so into it. Oh. What's going to happen? Deutsch. Oh, my God. Look at... Oh, oh, my God. Dude, what a champion. <laughs> Where did she slip right now? Just <laughs> flipped on her back and broke her head. <laughs> wow. Uh, that is fun. That I mean, that's fun. riveting. I didn't think it was as fun as we just had. Okay, new word that we have to use 10 times. Riveting. Riveting. That's easy, dude. No, see, I was making a coffee table the other day, and I was going through a different system of riveting in order to connect no, the pieces together. No, you're thinking of a different... Riveting is not... It's the same thing. Bro, check me out. I check me out. Riveting rivets? is like, oh, this is like really interesting. Rivets? Yeah, rivets. Making rivets is riveting. That's a ver or a, a verb. Adjective. Completely engrossing, compelling, riveting. Yes, but if you're making rivets, aren't you riveting? No, you're making rivets. <laughs> Steve, qualifying uh, con- c- conclusion. I just want to go curling. Hi, me too, dude. Yeah. <laughs> that looks fun. Um, so we decided that curling is the most absurd but best sh- sport. But I don't know. I'm I'm not really convinced. Have you guys watched netball? Like this Aussie game? 
Mm-mm. Check this out. I mean, if it's Australian, it's a crazy game, dude. Australian rules football. It's ironic because there's no rules. There's no rules. Just smear the queen. <laughs> dude, what are you going to do when you go to Australia's? Oh, I'm just going to chill, bro, and like eat my mother-in-law's food three times a day. I don't and get know if fat I've had and sassy. Fat and sassy. I don't know if I've eaten my, or Jen's food. Oh, my gosh. She's one of the greatest cooks yeah. to ever I'm walk sure, the planet. They have, have great cutlery, too. Steal me some. I, I need to steal me some. I, I stole a fork last time. Yeah. I need a spoon. Mm. This is netball. Okay, look at this. Is, look at how stupid this game is. <laughs> <laughs> look at it. She's laughing. She's like, it's hilarious. We're going to have some netball champions calling. Oh, I have seen this. You you can't. It's basketball. What? <laughs> how <laughs> fucking lame is that? Why don't anybody stop them? You can't dribble and you can't move once you catch it. And there's no backboard. It's just ultimate frisbee with a basket. No, it's <laughs> like it's like somebody why, why brought basketball. Why does anybody come and try to like defend? It's like somebody brought basketball to Australia and they were like, okay, well, let's let the Turn girls play. <laughs> <laughs> let's change the rules. It's so stupid. Now they're just showing Maybe highlights of them the athletes tickling I've each other. I've never been good at sports. It's it was. Uh, You're athletic. It was fine. Um, I'm, I don't know if that's true. You don't know if you, if you're athletic? Well, athletic is subjective, I guess. Like I'm not, I'm not like. You're coordinated. Uh, that's the thing. I don't know if I am. You're like coordinated. Hand-eye you're, coordination. You're, you're an airhead, but you're a court, but you're coordinated. <laughs> but like, even playing airhead. frisbee with you, like, I'm like, you, you're like, bro, why can't what you was it? What's the sound that happens yeah, when you do it? Shoink. <laughs> 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 Why can't you just flip me a frisbee? And I feel like every time, like if I if I caught a pass in football when I played in high school, yeah. it was like, yes. If I didn't, it was like, oh, well, that's to be expected. If uh, I, it's the same thing with the frisbee. If I throw a nice one, I'm like, I don't know how I just did that, but I'm glad it happened. Otherwise, I'm throwing dweebers off to the left, dude, every time. Yeah, but you can throw a football really well. You can throw a football super far. I can throw a football pretty decent. You know, I mean, I'm just, I just, I don't know. I, I, I'm not good at sports. I just never was. I just don't have that athletic drive. I just don't think that my that's, competitive dude, you work nature, out more than anybody I know. You have an athletic drive. Yeah, just in sports though, in 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 the playing of the game, I don't have. You just, you don't have a competitive edge. That's what you don't have. I have a competitive edge in other areas of my life. Where? Uh, I don't know. Probably with myself. Like. <laughs> I don't think that's competitive. <laughs> well, of course it is. Like, how could I be doing what I'm doing living in New York if I wasn't competitive to some degree? I don't think that's competitive. I think competitive has to be between two separate parties. No, well, it's, it's, well be I, I, I always recognize that somebody else in the world is working harder than me. So it makes me... Mm-hmm. So that's work. the competitiveness is you're competing against other people. And that's what right. keeps you motivated. So you, you, I was just exactly is what I'm saying. Like, no, you said you're competitive against yourself. Fine. So your 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 edge your, your competitive people. edge comes from thinking that other people are working harder than you. Yes. Okay. So it is yeah. com- competition. But, it, but when I played sports, I had no uh uh I it made it didn't make me feel any type of way that everybody else was playing harder than me. Yeah, I was athletic like, competition great. doesn't do no, it. No, I was you. like, great. Those guys want to win, and I could give a shit less. So it seems to be a resounding it. theme with your childhood. Yeah, well, uh, probably just caring less. <laughs> yeah, I didn't care at all. Well, I don't know. Maybe I cared too much that I just uh, made it seem like I cared. Not at all. I don't know. I didn't care much. It's interesting because you are an extremely caring person. Like you right. care about stuff I deeply. Know. <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah, I didn't. And it might be, be, and it might be a result of not having cared at all growing up, making up for lost time. Yeah, I don't know. I don't either. Um, so second stupidest sport of all time is netball. Um, <laughs> third <laughs> Do- well, it, dogs, uh, dog show, like, d- yeah, dog shows are kind of weird too. dog dancing. <laughs> dog, dog dancing. I fuck with for sure. What's that? <laughs> Dude, look it up. It's like the new, <laughs> look the, it new up. the new, uh, dog shows is these like Russian and German like dogs that dance next to their person. It's fantastic. <laughs> Oh, I'm down with that, dude. Dog <laughs> dancing. Let's check it out. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys don't watch this show by this point, you're missing. I'm riding the ring. 
Queen Lucy Imbergerova with Lacanoa Daryl from Italy. Приглашаю в ring Lucy Imbergerova. Is that dog just Lacanoa sitting in the middle of the room? Daryl, Italia, встречайте. Okay, we're going fast forward. Oh, yes, dude, it's a combat dance. <laughs> Oh, the dog just playing dead. Owner? Oh my, dude, this is meta. <laughs> <laughs> World dog show. Oh, whoa. We're going to sleep. I brought right, my blanket so out so to the middle. <laughs> people that are, for the people that are listening. Oh, Ricky, we found your For the people that are listening, we're watching a dog show and the owner is laying down and the dog is pulling a blanket off the owner yeah. wearing combat. Get out of bed. Clothes. Get out of bed, says the dog. <laughs> Pee on you. Oh, get up. What? Dude, this is so stupid. <laughs> oh my god, the dog's saluting. <laughs> yes, yes. Hike, hike. I do like that. I do like that move. That is nice. <laughs> those, are, those are some sturdy moves. <laughs> okay, hold on. I gotta tell you that if I was at the fucking dog park and some lady in combat boots started whipping out this routine... <laughs> I would be very curious about I'd that. I'd be human. riveting. I'd be riveted. riveted. Yeah. You wanted to use riveting. Uh, no, I'd be making rivets in the dirt. <laughs> oh, I think I passed out. I was going to say, you guys, um, I've been quiet from the cockpit uh, over there. What, I think Steve just passed. Uh, 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 what are one of the uh, types of shows that you guys have like always wanted to go? Like, Have you guys ever done a WWF or like a no. monster truck rally? I've done Demolition Derby before. And that's I've really cool. I, I always wanted to go to the Nitro Circus when that was I'd going around. Yeah, that was cool. really super interesting to me. Um, I've, always to the, I've always wanted going. to go to the X Games. Nitro Circus, I don't think, is going on I, I listened to like a, a, a podcast with Travis Pastrana, and he was talking, because he's the guy, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think he was just, I think he says that they still tour it. They're just not right now because of the pandemic. But Really? Yeah. I is Pastrana so. on the crew that's touring it? Uh, yeah. From, oh, from, from, I, it was a while ago that I listened to it, but that guy is, the pandemic. That guy blows my mind. He's, he's, do you think he's kind of on the spectrum a little bit? Uh, probably. I mean, all, all of us are, but yeah, you, I mean, well, obviously, yeah, we're all, in there a is a spectrum way, and we're all on it, but like, is he, what, what degree is the spectral need spectrum needle? I don't know. Man. That, that, that's don't like know, an adrenaline spectrum. That's a completely different one from like a psychological. Well, not, not necessarily just true. watching the nitro circus that I was like, so perplexed by Travis Pastrana. Cause he's, I mean, all those guys are elite athletes. Mm -hmm. And like, I think I, my position with the Nitro Circus, the introduction to that sort of show was Jackass. And Jackass is like a bunch of fuckheads just like doing dumb stuff mm -hmm. and hitting each other in the nuts. And so I was thinking like, oh yeah, well that's exactly what the Nitro Circus, these are like trained like Olympic yeah, athletes on Nitro Circus. Yeah. Yeah. They're like inc actually incredible athletes. Bam was a pretty good skateboarder, but like he was no Nigel Houston. He was no, mm -hmm. like he was never competitive. He was just good at like fucking around and doing drugs on tape. Right. Shout out, Bam! You want to come on the show? We'll have you for yeah, sure, absolutely. dude. We'd love to chat with you. <laughs> Seemingly have an interesting situation, but those two shows—that's that was what was funny about it. Was like when I started watching Nitro Circus, I was like, "Oh, this is just going to be another right. show where a bunch of people dick around." Wasn't the case. And, oh my god! It was Technical. like it was unreal the stunts those guys were pulling, and yeah. how often they were like, "Do you remember Sidecar Tommy?" Mm -hmm. They had like their friend that was like overweight and he was just oh, yeah. around all the time. They like made him do the stunts in, first. In like yeah. Harley. Yeah. Dude, and he like jumped a <laughs> lawnmower. Like he tried to backflip a lawnmower. You remember this? Yeah. It was like an ATV and broke his back. Ugh. Ugh. I would hate to just like somehow find myself in, in that, that friend group. group. <laughs> it's like, how did I get here? Yeah. I wonder like, I wonder what the ones who were like accessories to that friend group that like wanted to be part of it that were like just get like I inheriting positions as friends there but like weren't getting paid like Tommy yeah Psychar Tommy was though like became a character for that I wonder how many f people like well, so just wanted to be a part of it and then became part of it but like never actually <laughs> were contracted by the show <laughs> they just didn't get paid for any of the dumb was it, the, <laughs> was it was it Adam McKay that did Jackass no Adam McKay is like Will Ferrell's producing partner Right, but like, who was the who was the uh, producer that his did? Name. It was like Johnny uh, Knoxville and another guy. Yeah, I forget his. They were name. always pulling stunts on him. Do you remember yeah, this? Yeah. They were always those like those movies are great, man. I I oh, love those movies. epic movies. They're hilarious. Some of them, like towards the end of it, it was just like, Ugh. 
Like when you could really tell that like Steve-O's drug habit was it's starting to like cr- yeah. creep up on him. It yeah. was like, oh, this is kind of getting pathetic. I know. I like uh, that they did a cribs on what's his face, Steve-O's best friend. And it was just him and Pontius. His, like, Pontius, yeah. It was just him and his like Toyota Tacoma. Oh. <laughs> that was his cribs <laughs> episode. That's awesome. Yeah. Method Man, <laughs> Method Man and Red Man did that same thing too. Like yeah. they did a cribs for Method Man and Red Man and they took him to this apartment that was just like. Oh, like yes. a can of cash on the fr- oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't think it was their actual house, <laughs> but they were just trying to like punk yeah. Cribs. Because Cribs was so, I mean, God, Cribs was hilarious, right? Like, you'd come to the house and, like, you'd open the fridge and all the Gatorades were, like, pushed to the front of the fridge and just evenly dispersed to Cribs. <laughs> <laughs> <That's shit. laughs> who who gets their fridge set up like that? I do. Except you see my fridge? My crib. Your yeah, fridge is fridge. a bunch of open charcuterie on the ground. <laughs> yeah. That's all of Ricky Lake's dog food that she <laughs> needs to keep her bowels in, move, Ricky Lake's in motion. Uh, what, have you guys done any crazy stunts like that ever in your life? Have, what, what, would you guys even skydive? Oh, you've skydived before, Alan. Yeah, Did you I skydive, Steve? No, but I would. Yeah, I, I, I would like to. I, sco- I skydived. <laughs> skydove? Skydived. Skydived. I skydived? I skydived. Um, uh, skydived. Yeah, that story's crazy. Have you heard that story? Just tell it. So we were in France for a uh, tour. We were like going through France to get to, I think a festival in Spain or something. And in Europe, the bus regulations, I mean, in the States, the bus regulations are super tight too. Like you, if you drive over eight hours, you have to pay like double time. But in Europe, you can't, you literally, your bus stops at eight hours. Like they have these little mechanisms on the bus that you can't start it after eight hours. It just like shuts down and then it won't start up again for another eight hours. It's because of just like the, the, the working conditions of, of Europe or something that they don't no, want their yeah, it's, people it's to be. Just safety regulations, you know. Uh, Semi truck drivers and bus drivers driving over their limit, being sleepy and Union. going off the road. So uh, our bus driver had to stop at this truck stop that was in the middle of nowhere. It was the closest town was Niort, 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 France. N y o r t. N i o r t. Look this up right now. Niort, France. <laughs> I believe you. I mean, Niort. what are you going to find by looking it up? <laughs> well, I've never done this, actually. <laughs> I've, never just had, I've never just had an hour to kill with my best buds <laughs> looking up stupid <laughs> shit on the internet. Um, so, Niort. We, I'm pretty sure I have a picture, actually, of this church. So, we we see that, like, the, the closest thing is Niort to our bus, but it's like a five-mile walk, and we don't have... There's no Ubers there, right? So we just like me, Trev, Greg Ehrlich, and Elliot Foskey. We're like, we're going out. We're not going to just sit in the bus all day. So we just took off and started walking towards the town. Well, like three quarters of the way, we see a bunch of parachutes coming down from the sky. I'm like, oh, wow, that's cool. They're like skydiving over there. And 20 minutes later, like another... 15 pair i don't know 15 is the right word there was a a number of people parachuting out of airplanes whoa like there's a legitimate skydiving spot somewhere right Mm -hmm. and so we all got like the harebrained idea oh let's how crazy would it be if we all got to go skydiving on our day off so we start walking towards where we think these planes are taken off from we come across like a small airstrip a few airplane hangars and um, we start walking towards the airplane hangars. One of them's like kind of cracked open and we can sort of see that there's like some sort of commotion happening in there. We walk into the, kind of open the doors and just, I swear it's just like, you know, a movie where like the record goes, oh, boop, 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 stops and everybody turns their head and looks. That's what it was. Uh, I mean, I look like I do. <laughs> Elliot Foskey looks like a Muppet. Yeah. And Greg and Trev look like they program computers. <laughs> and so we pop in there and the French depending on where you are in France even in Paris like there's English is not a second language you you'll meet people that speak English for sure but it's not like it's not like um Holland or Sweden where pretty much everybody speaks English uh 
so none, nobody in the hangar could speak English and we couldn't speak French. So we're attempting to try to communicate to them like, Hey, can we go skydive? We're like holding our arms out like this. Like, can we go <laughs> parachute? You know, um, I think one of the people in the hangar spoke Spanish and Elliot studied Spanish in college. So I think they were able to communicate in that capacity. So their initial reaction was no, you can't go because it's getting too late. We don't have enough time. And also like there was a couple champagne bottles, like, already popped so they were like we've been drinking a little bit you know and so then we turn around to go leave and they're like wait 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 we have like we have three people that haven't drank and are willing to take you up because you have to be strapped to somebody you can't just like i mean you have to go tandem for the first i think 100 jumps or something or 20 jumps or something crazy like that so they said, but we, you have to hurry. We have to go because, you know, it's getting late. So they hand us these waivers. The waivers are entirely in French. It's like four pages of French, French, French that none of us read. So we just sign it. We pay our, like, money, whatever. And 15 minutes later, we're strapped, each of us. So you can only do three. So Trevor opted out. We were 10,000 feet above the south of France, like 15 That's minutes awesome. later, strapped to the front of these Frenchmen that were the super legends. My guy was maybe like 120 pounds, <laughs> like five foot four. And he strapped me on to the front of him. And we jumped out of this airplane and uh, landed and then partied all night long with them in their hangar Sweet. just like had cold cuts and cold cut drank and <laughs> Did they, they make the cold cuts for you well they were having like it was like a club so like every that every week that day all these you know a couple of them were pilots and owned planes and then a couple of them were like skydiving enthusiasts and so they all just met at this hangar and like brought sliced meats and in champagne and hung out all day skydiving and then would just like party and so our excursion to go find like a beer and a wiener schnitzel <laughs> ended up into the most incredible experience of my life. I love that. I wish I would have been there because that sounds it was like the best way to do it. It was the coolest. I think it was the coolest thing I've ever done on tour because mm -hmm. it was so spontaneous, spontaneous. And it was terrifying. I mean, like yeah. in hindsight, I was just like, well, this did you almost pull back when you got up there? No, like once you're in the plane, what are you going to do? You're going to be the guy that's like, hey, no, I think I'm yeah, going to exactly. land. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Can you unstrap me? Like, that's how I am with roller coasters, kind of. And like. Once you buy the ticket to go on. Once I'm, once I'm strapped in, it's like, what are you honestly going to, what is like being afraid going to do for you? What is ah, screaming going to do for you? I mean, you? it's not, it's just an instinct. It's not like, it's not like going to do anything for well, you. Well, the, the instinct happens. of, yeah, the instinct of like raising your arms and be like, ah, and screaming. Yeah. But like, the like, yeah, it just, ha it just happens. Tension of it. It's not like, it's so like, dumb. I'm going to choose to be this way right now. Yeah. It just happens. Like me being tense is going to keep this mechanism from <laughs> landing safely or not. It's ridiculous. It's like, the engineering and how tight the screws are maybe, but not me f like gripping the handlebars as tight as I possibly can. I'm sure, you, I'm sure there was still some, some fear in your, no, heart. once I was, once I was up in the air, I, it was epic. I didn't think about it until after I got on the ground and we partied all night with these people. Yeah. And then I was like, Oh, that was crazy. What we did. That was like legitimately crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that is cool. I, I would I would love to go skydiving. I mean, <laughs> skydiving. It's like we're talking about nitro circus and jackass dudes before getting into skydiving. Like as if skydiving is some crazy thing to do. It's not. It's pretty normal. I mean, it's not. It's not. It's not normal, but it's not. It's not that. Well, it's not nitro. Hardcore. It's not nitro circus, but it's probably one of the most hardcore things that an average Joe with zero athletic ability can do. Yeah. I want a squirrel suit. I don't know if I actually want to do that. Yeah. But. You could, you could not do that. <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, okay. So you just jumping out of a plane. I think no. in order to do that though, I think you legitimately have to like spend, I think it's like a specific amount you of could hours. not do that. That's like when I told my brother, I wanted to be an astronaut and he was like, 
come on, Julian. And well, now I'm not an astronaut because my brother discouraged me when I was six. You could, you could totally go do a squirrel suit, but you couldn't just do a squirrel suit today. Like you'd have to go not. skydive like 300 times right, before course. you could get in a squirrel suit. Right. I'm not Which that is stupid. Unbelievable, bro, what these squirrel suiters do. It is pretty crazy. It's friggin' insane. Also, FYI, guys, the FCI Dog Dance World Championship video from 2016 has 19 million views. <laughs> All of the videos combined that I've ever put on the internet have half that. Steve, you want to go? Um, do you want to go uh, skydiving with me sometime? I can't. Why? I'm too big. Lose a couple lbs, baby. Let's how go much, skydiving. How big you gotta be? Huh? How big is uh, the capacity? I don't know. I know there's a weight limit. So oh. look at this, bro. Throw it onto the TV, dude. These Red Bull guys are insane. How fun would that be, though, man, to like really have control of that and be doing that experience? If you were that good at it, it's your flying. Would be insane. Yeah, that seems fun. Wow. I would enjoy that. But so many like of those guys die. It's like the, the, look how close they are to the ground. It's insane when they're flying through. Yeah. These guys are awesome. Things I want to do with my life. Uh, you know? yeah, I think I'm, I'm not sure what the, I'm not sure what the weight cap is on skydiving, but Steve's right there. Um, cause yeah, my buddy, Jimmy, sense. he's like two, I'm not sure what Jimmy taps out at like 250, 260, but he's like six, seven and he couldn't go tandem there was nobody big enough that could go tandem with him to control the parachute while all because that's the thing is it's not necessarily the just your weight you have to have somebody strapped on when you first go mm -hmm. and so if the parachute can't hold both of you then uh no bueno so what's something that you uh, would still like to do that you haven't done yet that seems kind of crazy and out there? Steve, you want to get in one of those inflatable balls and roll down a big hill? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. If you guys were both in that together, you'd kill each other. We wouldn't kill each other. No, I no, would be Alan killed. Would be dead, yeah. yeah. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Bong. <laughs> Squat. <laughs> it would essentially be Steve attempting to hold onto the inflatable ball while I'm holding on to Steve. Yeah. Exactly. That would be. And I'm just making Alan into mashed potatoes. Ay, uh, ay, ay. Yeah, oh, dude, inflatable. I love that they know exactly what I'm talking about. Inflatable ball goes straight to it. Check me out. Inflatable Jones in real <laughs> life. <laughs> this also has 19 million views. Yeah, the shit that, like... People love it. I mean, look, we're watching <laughs> it. Oh, no, I couldn't <laughs> wait. Yeah, it seems really fun. I We got to go, guys. We got to go to camp or something. You want to do the uh, what country, is it, where they do the big cheese thing? What's the big is that, cheese is thing? That oh my yeah, God. where they roll the they cheese. They roll the wheel of cheese down like the steep <laughs> hill and they run down. I haven't seen that. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm not France. sure which country. I think it's Holland or the Netherlands or something. Oh, okay. There's I've never even been run? to the UK before. Have you been to the UK, Steve? Yeah, a couple times. Oh, yeah, you toured a bunch of times. Yeah, yeah cheese roll comp there. compilation, bro. Check this out. They roll a wheel of cheese down the... And the people, I don't even think they get the cheese if they win, but look at the bruising on this one. Flip it over to this daddy. <laughs> look at the bruising on this one. The, the, there's like a girl who won the last few years and she's just, she just flies down this Yeah, she just thing. floats down yeah. it pretty much. She's like a little angel. Look at all. Oh. <laughs> oh. I don't see no cheese. <laughs> well, I don't even think those people are like competing. God, dude. Oh. <laughs> People oh. are people are really hurting. People really like have a have a liking to hurting themselves. Oh yeah, they're breaking clavicles for sure. Oh, for sure. Ouch. Oh my god. Okay, this is enough. I've seen enough. Uh, <laughs> I've uh, seen uh, enough. Uh, Where's the oh. good ones? The ones that are good are incredible. I've seen enough. <laughs> my favorite is the guys who like will go down in a speedo. Obviously, it doesn't matter that I've yeah, seen Spider -Man. enough. Yeah, Spider Man. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, look at this guy's hauling. Look at him go. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> He's actually pretty good. He's pretty good, actually, yeah. That's like pretty incredible. Tuck and roll. God, how many? There you see, is. there's the cheese wheel. Go get it. <laughs> <laughs> what was the? Oh, God. <laughs> what was the? That guy's super good. <laughs> super good. <laughs> the guy in the green shirt, man. Like, he was on his feet most of the time. Super good. 
Look at Blue Shirt over here. He's like, oh. <laughs> can we promise to go do stuff like this someday in our lives, guys? Some guy just turns around and goes back up the hill. Or have you already made it up in your mind that you will never go do anything as as silly and stupid as this? Uh, I wouldn't do, do this. No. no, I'm not trying to blow out a knee in my 30s. <laughs> you guys want to go to Oktoberfest? I heard that's fun. I can do that. I'd do Oktoberfest for shout. My brother's. Oh my baby. god. <laughs> 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 we're He's just having going. oh for, my goodness for everybody, for everybody that's just listening to this podcast and not watching we're sorry because oh. all we're doing is reacting to idiots going down a grass hill hurting themselves chasing oh. a cheese ball they're heroes oh they, they are, are heroes <laughs> yeah. so dumb wow <laughs> What kind of cheese is it? That's what I want. I mean, is this are we talking Jack, like? Dude. Are we talking like Cougar Gold some here? Like Gouda. WSU Cougar talking Gold? Talking about some uh, smoked goody. <laughs> some smoked <laughs> goods. <laughs> I don't know that many types of chess. What's your favorite? Ch- uh, what's your favorite? Just no, cheddar. I like. Well, I like goat. Yeah, I thought goat you, if you were about thing. to tell me, Jules always does I this do, with I me. Do. I don't like cheese that much. He goes. He like. <laughs> we'll we'll be talking about this thing that's really good. Like I don't know. And name anything good pie uh b- blow jobs and he'll just be like we'll be talking about it for probably a good 15 20 minutes and then at the end of it, he'll be like yeah i don't really like blow jobs <laughs> i have certainly never said that no but like blow jobs. context is context is like the thing that like cheeseburgers the other day we're talking about cheeseburgers like oh yeah dude i like to mix cheese but put a bait on that and cheese and he's like yeah, I don't really like cheeseburgers. I was like, what the yeah, planet man. are you from? Mm-hmm. I just, I, I prefer a chicken burger. Yeah, I made a couple of good little, those, were good. those, those were the other great. day. I know, those were really good. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, I don't know. I'm just, I got a simple palate, man. My yeah. palate, I just don't care about food that much. He doesn't and have cheese, a penchant like, for tasty food. I don't have a penchant. That's 11, dude. That's 10 and a half. <laughs> we did it. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Che- cheese by itself to me is just too much. It's just too rich, and I just don't yeah. So I I would I agree with that. I like to ch- an I like- idiot. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I just don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't have like a mature palate, so I don't care for like. I don't know. It just doesn't taste that great to me. I don't. I've gone to really care. good restaurants with you though, and you've enjoyed your. Experience. Yeah. I always enjoy yeah, yeah. my experience, and I'll eat food and I'll explore. I'm not like. I'm not, I'm only gonna have the chicken nuggets and French fry combo at the Mexican restaurant. Like I'm gonna eat whatever. I'll eat, I'll, I'll explore a menu too. Mm. But uh, at yeah. the most incredible pasta last night. Oh, Ooh, what? Laura show me. Laura, Laura show me. A it was it was like basically just heirloom tomatoes, olive oil, you know, salt and pepper, and then you put a big brick of like herb feta, garlic and herb feta mm-hmm. in the middle, mm. and you roast it. And then you just stir the whole thing up and throw some pasta, in, like some pasta in there. We had some fancy noodles. It was fucking incredible. What kind of noodles are you using? Um, they looked like little witch hats. Actually, they were kind of like a fancy art- artisanal noodle. Oh, like uh, like what are those cone corn chips? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but the pasta was unbelievable. What what inspired that? Just a recipe online just, or something? Yes, Laura just sees these little like Instagram videos and we just like to experiment. Have nice. you guys made feet loaf since Gabe left? No, we can't do it without Gabe. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, did you see it when you made it for them? <laughs> yeah, it's just like meatloaf, but in the foot f- shape of a foot. Yeah, yeah I mean, he puts like onions, onions on his fingernails yeah. and stuff. Yeah, that was the real <laughs> clincher. That was like, I just put like that. cheese in between the toes and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did like you did like sticks of cheese. Yeah, uh, as like the hair on the top of the foot Ugh. too. Yeah, not even sticks of cheese, just like grated cheese. Is hey, Ricky, like, <laughs> um, well, that's. That's nice. I, I we we've been you've been cooking a lot of good food lately, man. Uh, I I can do a couple things well. Mm-hmm. Your wife is a ten bajillion times better cook than yeah, you are. Yeah, Taz is an incredible. Doesn't cook. mean that what you cook well isn't good. I like all the food you guys make. Yeah. I don't ever cook you make anything. A great protein, now. Yeah, yeah. I'm 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 on the protein lane. I don't really dance with anything else because Taz is so good at everything else mm-hmm. that like if. Well, and also too, I wish I, I wish I had an affinity for something other than protein. For me, like I, yeah, I like cooking. I like making handhelds and proteins. <laughs> you like making handhelds? Yeah. Like that's kind of what I enjoy. Cause I love like a good sandwich, like making a fun sandwich, but I don't really like dive into making pasta much or like, um, you know, any sort of any sort of like Asian dish, I just like leave that alone because mm-hmm. that's kind of Taz's world. But uh, I do enjoy cooking. Biggest hurdle for me is multitasking because like I start, I'll start 
like cooking the protein at the same time as I'm like chopping the lettuce for the salad, mm -hmm. which is any cook will tell you that's the wrong just route. Time, time you know, you gotta like not your strong suit. Time management is not neither, my strong neither suit. Neither is uh, using minimal dishes. Well, that's <laughs> why I use so many dishes because I'm just like ah, ah, yeah. ah, trying to do as many things as possible before the mm -hmm. protein is finished cooking in order to serve everything at the same time. When obviously like the majority of a good cook is just the prep. It's just like mm -hmm. cutting all the vegetables, having yeah. everything prepped so that like when you actually go to serve it, you throw it in like five minutes and it's and it's done. Yeah. But I like a tight mise en place myself. You like a what? A tight mise en place. Oh, what's that? I don't know what that means. It means like organized, like everything's in its ah, place. Tight uh, mise en yeah. place. Tight mise en place. Bro, you've been, let's talk about the knife I got you for Christmas. Oh, dude, I've been chopping the thinnest garlic slivers. Yeah, you've been <laughs> chopping back a leg. <laughs> nice. I'm all about the prep, baby. <laughs> we, I got Steve a like Japanese knife. I use it for, every day. For Christmas. Really? Every yeah. day. And wow. he put, took it out of the package at our Christmas Cried. Sorry, New Year's party. Yeah, first yeah. of all, started crying, which is adorable. <laughs> See a man, Steve's size, crying uncontrollably. <laughs> Over a knife. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but then crying over all the gifts they were lovely <laughs> gifts yeah. but then but then i forget who was over at the time but he's like check this out he gets like a walnut out of my f closet and starts fucking shaving it with, <laughs> with the really small slithers actually of shaves what was it garlic or was it a cashew it was uh, it was a cashew <laughs> steve was doing this yeah, yeah dude just blacked out <laughs> yeah. shaving thin slice you're like you only had to do it a couple times i think i sliced the whole thing <laughs> that's hilarious man yeah. the funniest video of that night is all of us are having like a shirts off dance party in your living room yeah and it's all in done in time lapse and it's over the course of like 30 minutes and steve is just sitting in the corner <laughs> the whole time with two drinks that progressively go down and finish he doesn't move and everybody's just fucking <laughs> dancing all over the place and he's uh, just still with his drinks that just <laughs> my favorite part about that whole thing is that we put rudy to bed at like you know seven Seven, normal yeah yeah a kid can sleep through an earthquake we were raging man we were, we're just like Year's Eve, dude. we you watch we it. watch movies in we like turned our couch you haven't been over to our house since we switched it around stevie baby mm. pretty much we're, we're dealing with the we're dealing with new quarters here yeah, new quarters are, no yeah i as a gift for the valentine's day special being successful i bought myself a robot mop <laughs> cool yep it is awesome <laughs> it mops the nice. floor <laughs> I'll come over and make you guys that pasta. Please. Yes, let's do it. And then also we turned our ca my couch around so that it's now facing like where the pro the projector wall. Oh, cool. And we've been moving like our family movie nights upstairs. Oh, what a greater, it's a much greater experience. Um, I like them in both rooms. I, I enjoy them downstairs too because that's just a great space as well, but it is but there's not as much room it's not as spread out yeah yeah and yeah. you're farther away from the kitchen where you can get all the chips yeah but you're true. closer to the beverage fridge it's closer to the beverage fridge that's true uh, that's true that's, there's a lot of variables true. that play into <laughs> comfort true. god i love comfort so much there's nothing better than just finishing a day and putting your jammies on and being like dude what are we gonna watch tonight amen yeah i love I don't that do it very often in new york and i'm super happy that i'm able to do that we i mean I was going to say, when I thought you are about to say you don't do that very much here. I'm like, bro, literally six months, we've been done it every night. <laughs> That's not true. We, when we're working, we're not. <laughs> no, um, we've been, we, we like our, we like our shows, man. You, I, you know, I mean, dangerous. I don't. They finally put out every season of Modern Family. Oh, bro. wow. On what service? Uh, Hulu. Hulu. Who knew? I, I, I there's so many shows. Uh, I listen to um, the Smartless podcast with Jason Bateman and mm -hmm. um, Sean Hayes and Will Arnett, and uh, they're talking about uh, Arrested Development a lot, which seems awesome. And I love Jason Bateman so much, man, as an actor. And um, I haven't even like thought about that show until. Have you watched it? No, no I haven't oh, watched bro, you much watch of anything, anything, man. Watches, you got to watch Arrested Development. There's so much. Like when Rudy is our age d the amount of things that he will have to digest oh, like yeah. really good shows and shows that still hold up like the godfather still holds up that movie is 40 years old i just made that 
number up, but it's pretty old. <laughs> yeah, he's going to have like 10, 10 seasons of Uncle Dean's show, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, bro. Sure. He's gonna, our age. I think he's going to listen to How Good's This Podcast. No. Like, Dad, you guys sound like gypsies. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, we'll, uh, maybe we'll have this thing going long enough for him to come be on it. Dude, that'd be fun. I don't know if I would allow that. Why? Because kids got to stay in his lane. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Get your own podcast. I'm gonna kid. make a piece of content for the Instagram out of that piece that just got said. Get your own podcast. Kid. Kid, this kid's got to stay in his lane. His curling kid lane. Participate. What if he like gets super excited and is just like, Dad? Look, I'm 12 years old. Or whatever. I'm 18 and been thinking about going to college i've been thinking about all these things that i want to do with my life because you've been encouraging me to do all those things and i really just want to come on the road with you yeah sure it's i, I plan on bringing my yeah if but i like, get, if I, I have the opportunity to have more kids than just rudy uh, kids but but rudy i plan on bringing him on the road at a very young age and handcuffing him to Stephen J. Libby. Yeah, I'll put him to work. And putting and learning like a good day's work. That was one right. thing that I felt like I missed out on. Like I learned team sports. I learned how to get good grades. There was a lot of things that I was taught growing up. The one thing I did not learn and appreciate until probably like mid twenties when I first started like touring a group of people around and like having an obligation each night to have to pull off and if I didn't pull it off, it like broke my heart mm -hmm. was hard work. I did not understand the power of a hard day's work Yeah. until, I mean, well into my twenties and <laughs> that'll be that. And like money, those are like the two things that if I go, if I, as well as like team sports and working within a community and working within a team and like being polite and this is all these attributes that I hope Rudy when he's 18 I can look at and be like oh yeah dude, this is a good kid mm -hmm. uh, understanding and managing money is one because that I still haven't learned that I'm 40 years old totally um, <laughs> uh, and a hard day's work learning yeah. how to learn how to put in a hard day's work and being proud of your work yeah. being proud of a hard day's work not like well I'd really be going off and playing some Xbox games mm -hmm. it's like well the Xbox it doesn't feel good unless you earn that Xbox you go and put six hours a day raking leaves um, so yeah he'll come out on the road and push some boxes dude absolutely will you uh, be pissed if he if he uh, doesn't if he doesn't push boxes Want to be <laughs> hard working I mean what kid wants to work hard mm. you have to teach him I know but what I'm not just gonna naturally man? like f be a hard worker I mean uh, listen I'm strapping up and prepared for the qualms of raising children in the like tw 20 is it the 22nd century yet? dude I was just talking to uh, Taz the other day and your son or no I was talking to Teddy and Ty because they have a two month old or one month old and I was like, man, your son is going to graduate in 2039. Yours is yeah, 2038. Lord, Lord willing. Lord willing. <laughs> um, yeah, that's wild. What a trip, right? Almost 2040. Yeah, that's crazy, man. But time, our, is, our, time is a moving. Our parents uh, and the parents proceeding did the same exact thing. For sure. Like I mean, 1987 when we were born, they were like... Your son's going to graduate, graduate in 2005. 2005. Remember, did you guys, have, did either of your families ever pay heed to Y2K at all? They no. paid heed to it. They didn't like focus or like let it. They didn't prepare for it or no, like my, my, really my, worry my about it. My neighbors did though. My neighbors got like, they were prepping. Hard. Rations. Mm -hmm. we ha they still have these like gigantic blue barrels of just water up in there like the uh, attic or i mean they did when i was around them living and they had all this food up in their attic and yeah they they prepped for it hard but no my my parents i don't even know where where we were at that point nothing mattered at two, in 2000 you would have been in eighth grade nothing, yeah it, that was post a divorce and nothing was going on what about you steve life. did your parents prepare no, not, for it at all not at all no yeah we still have i think i don't what know about you? we must you have ate them like some preppers 
doomsday preppers. Oh, Ricky Lake. Oh, my God. She just laid a stonker. <laughs> Staunch. Oh, I love that she just looks you in the eyes after she I know. Uh, Quan Donovan. Have you want to touch my peepers? I've been, I've, been, I've, been, I've been calling Ricky Lake Quan Donovan recently, and that's a fun thing to say, but good God, Quan, you suck. Oh, it smells like, it's yeah, it smells like medicine. That's what her butt smells like. You can tell it's Rick. Yes, boo-boo. I'm talking about you. You're a stinky boo-boo. <laughs> but I love you. You flat-faced <laughs> little boochie. Um, yeah, my I had a quite a few people move up to Chewila kind of in, at, in fear of Y2K, mm. like what potentially might happen. And I think naturally when you grow up in any religious circle – there's always like end of times mm-hmm. kind of people. Armageddon's coming. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just kind of naturally comes with the territory. I think mm-hmm. that like the world is at its end and everything will come to an end soon. And my takeaway from Armageddon was Aerosmith. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to climb my eyes. I don't want to fall. Remember that? I remember, I remember the song. Yeah. Yeah. That was from Armageddon. Sweet. <laughs> I never, I never saw Armageddon. <laughs> you didn't? I was watching tonight. Yeah. Alan's also never seen Titanic. Hard it's pass. Bruce Willie. Hard pass yeah, on Bruce both Willie of those did. movies. Um, You're stupid. I heard recently a few interesting things about the Titanic that uh, I forget what I was listening to, but um, apparently there was an affluent couple on the boat. And there wasn't enough room in the lifeboats for both the wife and the husband. And so the wife opted out of going on the lifeboat. She stayed on the boat. And her and her husband went down to their room, put on their most expensive pair of pajamas, and got into bed waiting for the ship to capsize. If you had seen the movie, you would know that there were several people that did the same thing there's scenes in the movie where people are doing stuff like that ah well there you go now you know for a fact that i'm not lying when i say i <laughs> didn't see it <laughs> oh, we should watch it man it's a great movie i'll watch it with you i, I bet, bet it's a flick i bet i'm coming over to your house this weekend steve we're having a party great <laughs> um you guys let's wrap this up it's been around an hour long uh this has been a blast it always is um glad that you guys could um, enjoy our penchant for silliness. I Pensions? seriously think I, I think I blacked out when I was laughing at that dog show. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I actually crazy. blacked out over here. You stand up too quick, baby, and you can black out <laughs> real quick. <laughs> I hope you guys. I hope. I hope the people that are listening will decide to just watch it because it's probably more fun that way, right? Uh, either way. Yeah, either if you way. See Julian's kneecaps. Yeah, I, mean, I got kneecaps. <laughs> um, take care. We love you, and uh, we'll see you next time. Sayonara. Penchant. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Oh, boo-boo, did you just make it to the end of the video? Yes, you did. Do you want to see more videos just like this one, huh, do you? Well, then head over to patreon.com slash live at the lodge where you can support the how goods of this podcast as well as the entire live at the lodge family. Yep, yeah, you're going to get exclusive merch, personalized shout-out videos. Me and Jules, we're going to show up at your house and baptize your nephew, huh? Check it out, patreon.com slash live at the lodge.